Football season is finally here, y'all. Fall camp starts today, so now is the time to really start getting into the nitty-gritty of things. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show, Lacey Butler and Jonathan Davis, your hosts, and it's finally football time in Texas. Y'all, the football gods are shining bright down in the great city of Austin, Texas on this Wednesday morning because fall camp officially starts today for Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns. Um, before we really get into things, there are a few discussions that I believe really need to ha- really need to happen um, heading into grind time. But before we do that, let's give a shout out to today's sponsor. Today's sponsor of Locked On Longhorns is going to be Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. As if we all couldn't be excited enough, I thought today I'd start off. Uh, I, I thought today words. Sorry, I thought I'd start off today's episode on a high note by naming um, a couple of guys that I feel like have the potential to really solidify the type of impact they'll be making on the field this season, um, specifically by making that statement in fall practice. The first guy that uh, I really want to get into is uh, third year running back Jaden Blue. I know I've talked ad nauseum about Jaden Blue, but Jonathan Brooks kind of wrote the blueprint for waiting your turn in the NIL era at Texas. And I think that Jonathan Blue has the opportunity to really elevate the foundation um, that the guys before him really built. Obviously, coming in behind guys like Bijan Robinson, Jonathan Brooks, and being that third year experienced guy that's had pretty limited touches in his time at Texas. Blue has really had to test his patience, and uh, I believe he has really started to show a lot of maturity both on and off the field. He spoke in the spring about making sacrifices off the field to make sure that he was dedicating his time to becoming a better overall football player, you know, not spending as much time with friends, not hanging out with friends as much, not going out as much, not, you know, not doing the the quintessential central college lifestyle specifically to be able to hit film study hit some extra drills extra workouts whatever he needs to do to have an impact uh he seems to be really headed down that path clocked as the fastest running back in the country in 2023 at 2020 or 2020 22.3 miles an hour Jaden blue is what i consistently like to call lightning in a bottle um He's one of those guys that he has the agility to hit his holes very, very hard and very quick, mixed with the breakaway speed to make him pretty much there and gone in the blink of an eye. I am obsessed with um, Jaden Blue's athleticism, and I I think he's just one of those guys that he he offers a very different running style to C.J. Baxter as well. So I'm really, really ready to see what that one-two punch has to offer, especially considering, you know, we saw a pretty good one-two punch with B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson, but last year it was a little bit more of the Jonathan Brooks show. So I am excited to see what that one-two punch has to offer, especially with the versatility in that room, Um, especially because Blue can also be a pretty big threat in the passing attack for Steve Sarkeesian as well. So I'm really, really looking at him uh, this fall to shut some mouths and make a lot of people eat their words. I know that there's um, a lot of lists and stuff that have come out that haven't mentioned any of the Texas running backs, much less Jaden Blue, who, like I said, clocked as one of the fastest guys in the country last season, the fastest running back in the country last season. So, bug, sorry. (laughs) But um, he's one of the few guys in college football that I believe genuinely has the opportunity for an explosive play every single time the ball is in his hands. And I'm just really looking forward to see, to seeing how well he's maintained the mindset that we heard from, or we heard and saw from him all spring. Like I said, um, back in the spring, Steve, Steve Sarkeesian actually made him available to the media along with guys like Gunnar Helm, Jake majors. This was before the spring game 
So um, I think not only Jaden Blue's confidence in himself is increasing and getting better every single day, but I think the staff's confidence in him and his abilities every single day, not only on the field, but off the field, leading the room, being a veteran guy in that room is very, very important. So I'm really, really excited to see what Jaden Blue is able to do this upcoming season. And I really think that he has the potential to be a big, big impact player, breakout star for us going into the 2024 season. Um, so going into my next potential breakout star, we're going to kind of switch to the opposite side of the ball here. Um, and that's going to be UTSA words, sorry, UTSA edge transfer Trey Moore. Now Trey comes in as a guy that not only brings added experience to a room that's headlined by some pretty experienced guys anyways, you know, fourth year, Baron Sorrell, third year, Ethan Burke. Um, but he was highly productive under Jeff Trailer at UTSA. We've seen spurts of production a little bit um, under DC Pekwikowski, um, specifically at the edge position, finishing top tie, top tie, top five to top ten in quarterback pressures in the past few years. But the thing that's really been missing from our defensive line game is the ability to finish consistently, and that's exactly what I think that Trey Moore brings to the Forty Acres. Um, he had a school, a UTSA school record of 14 and a half sacks, 17 tackles for loss and 45 tackles in 2023. First team, all AAC, uh, AAC defensive player of the year. This guy knows how to get to the quarterback. He knows how to cause chaos behind the line of scrimmage, albeit it is at the G5 level. But, um, Trey Moore has proven time and time again that he, he ain't no slouch y'all. Um, we've heard a lot about him in the spring. We've heard a lot about him coming into fall camp. Um, I'm really, really excited to see what PK does with this rotation because that specific position group has uh, the opportunity to be very, very impactful part of our defensive success, our defensive success this season. Um, obviously, with us having bigger question marks on the interior in lieu of Byron Murphy, Tavondre Sweat, guys like that. Um, you have the veteran presence on the edge. Like I said, you have the young buck in Colin Simmons that has all the physical ability in the world to make a to make an impact very, very, very early for Steve Sarkeesian. But I believe that Trey Moore is going to be the, the real hidden gem that comes in and immediately makes the room just a little bit scarier for opposing quarterbacks. Like I said, based off of what we saw last year and what we heard about him in the spring, I think that Trey Moore is primed to make a very, very sizable difference for the Horns in 2024. Like I said, especially it being at a position of need, at a position that we haven't seen a lot of real production from. Like I said, we saw the increase in quarterback pressures, but we've really, really struggled actually finishing the play, finish getting the quarterback down on his back. And it's... It's been a struggle for us. It's been a struggle for us the past couple of seasons. I know Texas fans have complained about it a lot the past couple of seasons, but I think that Trey Moore is going to be one of those guys that comes in, like I said, and makes an immediate impact on that front. This episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak, perfor peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. Number one, ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Now, the second part of this show is a little bit more, not somber, but a little bit not as positive not as not as exciting i guess um these are a little bit more about the position groups that have the most pressure on them going into this season um 
obviously, like I said, it's another topic of, topic of conversation that I want to have. Um, going into fall camp, it's not necessarily the position groups that I think are going to be struggling heading into the season. These are just the groups that I think have the most pressure pressure on them to perform at a high level right out of the gate. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and start talking about one that's pretty obvious. Um, I feel like a lot of people have brought this up in conversation, the interior of the defensive line. Like I said, it's been talked about a lot, probably even in your own personal Texas football circles ad nauseum. But when you lose the Outland Trophy winner on one side and, you know, the uh, a first round draft pick right next to him in the same exact draft, that's obviously going to be one of the biggest question marks going into the season. Um, but with a passing defense that ranked in the bottom half of the country in, in uh, yards per game, I feel like we got pretty spoiled with having guys like Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy um, really anchor that interior for us. Like, I mean, how can you not? When they're allowing 34 yards to the Doug Walker winner in the Big 12 championship, when they're um, you know, not allowing the Iowa State center to sit there and continue to talk his – talk is trash, you know, it's it, it's kind of hard to not get a little bit spoiled whenever you're talking about guys like that. But who is going to step up? You know, like you have some experience in the room with guys like Alfred Collins, Vernon Broughton, Jare Bledsoe. But overall, you don't have that trusted, consistent production under Steve Sarkeesian in the interior that you've had previously. So now let's not get it twisted, though. The talent in that room is some of the best that Texas has had in a long time. But like I said, who is going to step up? Could it be Jare Bledsoe, who has the athletic ability of a freaking Titan, but has really lacked the in-game consistency? Or a Jermaine Lole, who is arguably the best run stopper on the team from the moment he stepped on campus? Uh, maybe an Alex January, the the chance to jump, you know, give an Alex January the chance to jump in and uh, see what he is able to do. Um, you know, he was a big anchor in the 2023 state championship um, with Colin Simmons uh, at Duncanville. So obviously this is a position of need that we are really, really needing some guys to really step up. Um, and I think that there is a lot of pressure, especially considering, like I said, with what we saw last year out of Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, there is a lot of pressure on them to be able to at least match that, right? That's really, really tough. It's probably not going to happen, so it's probably better to just go ahead and temper those expectations. But um, if there isn't any pressure on this line now, there's definitely going to be some come week two in Ann Arbor. Outside of what we learn about the starting rotation in fall camp our game at michigan will be the best measuring stick as to what exactly we can expect especially when talking about the run game i know michigan michigan is breaking in you know new head coach new system a new quarterback but you know that just lets me know that they're going to be relying heavily on you know that interior of their defensive line um that's been pretty stout for them and donovan edwards you know, so I, I think that game is really going to end up coming down to the run game and which which team, which opponent can stop the other. I don't know why my brain just kind of like short circuited, but whichever team can stop the other run game, the more the, the, the more the most <laughs> is going to be the team that ends up coming on top of that game, in my opinion. So I think that. Um, going into Ann Arbor week two is when they're going to kind of let Donovan, Ed Donovan Edwards loose. And then that's when we're going to see what we are really made of on the interior, in my opinion. Um, the next group that I really want to go into, this one kind of might shock a few people here and there. Um, but I went ahead and went with the wide receiver room um, because, like I said, it might shock a few of you. But because of what. Steve Sarkeesian and wide receiver coach Chris Jackson has been able to bring to the table via the transfer portal, recruiting at the high school level. But if we're talking about group, if we're talking about groups that have a lot of pressure on them to to perform and to perform quickly, I'd say look no further than the wide receiver room. Obviously, losing over half of your production from last year to the NFL and guys like Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell, Jordan Whittington. 
obviously there are some very, very valid questions about not necessarily if or when someone steps up, because obviously there's so much talent in that room, but who? Sark mentioned that they are going to be using a lot more of a, a much more fluid rotation of guys this year than we've seen in years past. And even yesterday, Kyle Flood confirmed that they have about nine guys that they're looking at to make an impact on the field this upcoming season, uh, upcoming season in that wide receiver room. Um, Sark has, repra- has praised the depth in that room as well. You know, we, we talk about we have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to talent at the wide receiver position and guys like, Isaiah Bond, Silas Bolden, Matthew Golden, Ryan Wingo, you know, all of those guys have either come in via the transfer portal or high school recruiting. And it, like I said, there, there's only one guy in the room that, at, like, when you really think about it, there's only one guy in that room that has true in-game experience within Steve Sarkeesian's system, and that's John Tay Cook, who only recorded... 136 yards on just eight attempts in 2023. That is a 17-yard average, so he made the most out of his attempts, so I'm really, really excited to see what John Tay Cook is able to do, especially with guys like Isaiah Bond on the other side and being able to weave in a Matthew Golden or a Silas Bolden in the slot. Um, You know, Isaiah Bond, Matthew Golden, Silas Bolden, all of those guys were very, very highly productive at their previous spots. But coming into a program that just sent three receivers to the NFL and are kind of continuing to ride the high of a conference championship, playoff appearance, stuff like that, there's going to be a lot of pressure to come in and be in sync with Quinn Ewers pretty early on. Quinn being in year three, honestly, I don't. I hope that that's not a big problem. Obviously, the in-game timing and everything is going to is going to vary from week to week and so like it goes back to what I was talking about with Michigan. Um having that early game against Michigan in week 2 is going to be a big test for Quinn Ewers and the receivers. Michigan returns a lot of key pieces in their secondary that are very very good. Guys like Will Johnson who is touted as the best corner in all of college football. That, that That is not going to be no slouch game, new coaching staff, new quarterback or not. That is a very, very important game for the University of Texas. So having everyone locked in early is going gonna, is gonna to be key, which comes with some pressure, especially at the University of Texas, where we have struggled to really maintain and sustain any successful momentum that we've garnered in the past, you know. So will the pressure turn these gyms into diamonds? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. (laughs) Some of my favorite childhood memories are taking trips to Chicago, going down to Wrigleyville, getting a Wrigley dog, and enjoying a good old-fashioned day at the ballpark. There's nothing like seeing Wrigley Field and its iconic ivy open up in front of you to the roar of the crowd and the smell of roasted peanuts, and there's no better place to get your game day experience than at game time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With Game Time, there are so many ways to save money on tickets no matter when you buy. Game Time offers incentives like last minute deals, the Game Time guarantee of having the lowest prices around, and my personal favorite, all in pricing, meaning no surprise fees at checkout. I hate surprise fees it is the it drives me absolutely insane um so (laughs) take the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on college no spaces for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute ticket prices or last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Speaking of ticket prices, that leads us into the final topic of today's episode. Um, there were some numbers that were released by 24 7 Sports that I found pretty interesting. Uh, the 2024 Texas Longhorns have three of the top four and four of the top seven most expensive games to attend in 2024. Like, obviously, we sit and talk about how popular Texas is and how, you know, 
no matter what will always be relevant. But even that kind of shocked me that that's a lot. That's a lot in the top. That's a lot in the top 10, much less the top seven. So <laughs> Texas versus Texas A&M takes the top spot at number one on the list at a whopping $625 per ticket, which I feel like that's obviously to be expected. Revamping that rivalry is already seeming like it's going to end up paying dividends for the SEC. Everybody is excited about it. And I think it's going to live up to all of the hype and then some, especially, you know, with Texas taking, you know, uh, Jim Schlossnagel and just th there's been a lot of uh, animosity over the past few months and everything with the revamping of that rivalry. So I'm really, really excited about that one. Um, rounding out the top five, you've got Texas versus Michigan coming in at $469 a ticket. Um, and Red River Rivalry sitting at $445 a ticket. Both games obviously very highly sought after in their own right. All of, uh, all of college football obviously is excited about the Texas versus Michigan game being one of the biggest games in the 2024 season. And like I said, it ob it's pretty obvious why those games would be extremely popular. The final game that ends up being in the top 10 for the most expensive ticket prices is Texas versus Georgia coming in at $355 a ticket. So if you want tickets to these games, especially specifically Texas versus Georgia, I hope you already got them. So <laughs> because the weekend of October 19th is going to end up being one to remember for not only the University of Texas, but the city of Austin just in general. You've got probably the game of the year. It's been talked about as one of the most coveted games of the entire 2024 season, but that's also happening at the exact same time as the F1 races. So if you want to take your shot at being front and center for some se for some SEC action, now is the time to jump on those tickets, hotel accommodations, whatever you need, jump on those tickets because these prices are insane. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I look at these prices and I'm, I'm just shocked. I mean, the, everything's just getting so expensive y'all like everything has just gotten so expensive nowadays but you know with texas coming off of a conference championship and a college football playoff appearance we're really really riding the high so like i said i just think that it it, it makes sense that we are it, it makes sense in my brain as to why we are some of the top or the most expensive ticket prices that are available right now. Really, really highly sought after games. A lot of people are very, very excited for year one into the SEC. I know I am, and I just can't wait to see what happens with fall camp. I'm excited to hear all of the reports, see what happens, see what goes on, see if we have any questions that are answered. I'm, I'm very, very excited. So thank you guys so much for joining in on today's episode. Please make sure to like, Comment down below who your breakout star is or which position group you think has the most pressure on it going into the 2024 season. Thank you guys so much for joining in. My name is Lacey Butler. We will see you next time. Hook'em horns.